Okay, well, I think we'll start. Um, my name is Dave Tillmouth, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. You'll see that you have a Q&A section in your window. So let's just test that by everyone saying hi to us, if you can find that, and just pop a message in there so that you can see you find it. Please feel free to ask questions in this window as we go along, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the event. So let's introduce the panel. Richard Gould, who is Sales and Business Development Manager at MetLays and a qualified engineer, has been working with the company for four and a half years, joining very shortly after MetLays was created. Prior to MetLays, Richard was Commercial Manager at Castings Technology International and the University of Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre for the AMRC Castings Division. He's been instrumental in the successful implementation of new advanced manufacturing techniques in companies based in the UK and worldwide, including Rolls-Royce, GKN, McLaren Automotive, Boeings and Siemens. Andrew Mather has been a chartered mechanical engineer for over 30 years and he installed one of the first robotic applications within Philips UK and then spent several years developing hydraulic control systems within the steel rolling industry before designing special purpose automation and became expert in computa computational fluid dynamics at a company supplying roll cooling systems into the steel industry. In, in, 19, in 2007, Andrew joined Rolls-Royce as part of the formation of a rapid manufacturing capability becoming chief engineer of the Rolls-Royce Unipart uh, Unipar joint venture MetLays in 2015. Stuart Louth is a chartered mechanical engineer and the product development and innovation manager at MetLays. He has over 20 years of experience as a fixture designer, the majority of which has been in consultancy environments. Stuart holds a bachelor's degree in product design, a master's degree in engineering multimedia and a fixture in PhD from Nottingham University. A former academic at the University of Nottingham, Stuart has led a number of robotics and mechanical design research programmes funded by EPSRC and Innovate UK. He is the named inventor on 12 patents and an author on several published peer-reviewed scientific papers, and he has also supervised four PhD products on completion. Jonathan Andrews has almost 20 years of experience in engineering sales and, sales and product management roles. Throughout this time, he has focused on helping manufacturing businesses become more competitive through the adoption of digital processes such as 3D printing and additive manufacturing. And today, we're also welcoming in from the NCC, Jonathan Butt, who leads the digital manufacturing arm of the growing digital engineering division, bringing 10 years of experience in automation, robotics and digital across multiple sectors. Playing a critical role within the Smart Factory Innovation Hub testbed project, Jonathan is passionate about advancing better efficiency in product process and technology development. He's also involved with the Digital Engineering Technology Initiative, an R&D programme delivered by the NCC on a mission to position the UK as a global leader in digital. He's also a part of the 5G ENCODE project laid by, led by Zeta Networks, delivering the UK strategic 5G test bed at the NCC. So we have a really uh, well um, experienced panel here today. And I'm gonna hand over to Richard Gould, who will now present the webinar. Richard. Thanks very much, Dave, and welcome everybody to uh, to this web uh, MetLay's uh, webinar about uh, smart and digital manufacturing. Um, today, we're going to be talking to you about uh, our own digital manufacturing journey that we've been on for a number of years and over this time we've spoken to many companies tens if not hundreds of companies about about their views and about their um, challenges and requirements from a digital manufacturing point of view uh, and uh, over and over again three points three main points have come out of the uh, of, of these conversations uh, a lot of it's about unraveling digital manufacturing what does it mean to you as a business and how can it help your business uh, there's, there's there's much discussion about digital manufacturing in fact there's the, the general view is there's more discussion than actually implementation um, the, the, the next kind of major challenge that we often uh, talk to our customers about is generating a, or creating a fit for purpose solution uh, there's there's many products out there that have been developed for specific requirements but how can those how can those products be implemented and used to help my business is, is, a, is, a, is a common question and finally data now it's often said that uh, data is the new oil well it's it's only it's only a, the new oil if that data can provide you value so it has to be actionable not just collecting data for the sake of it so this within this webinar we're going to be talking through some of these points and hopefully unraveling some of the digital manufacturing uh, challenges 
Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Stuart, who's going to talk to you about our journey on developing our core digital technology architecture platform. Stuart. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, uh, right. Uh, guys, thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you about um, the, the technology behind what, what we create for, for our digital fixtures um, and the platform that we use to, to create them. Um, next slide, please. So, uh, obviously, Met Metlays as a company, we are primarily a design consultancy, and that gives us a number of kind of challenges that we face whenever we're trying to create digital tools um, or integrate uh, electronics and sensing within within fixtures. Now, for us, uh, sensing flexibility is quite a challenge. So we need a system that allows us to be as flexible as we can, because we never really know what our customer is going to be asking for next. One day it could be displacement sensing, the next day it could be temperature. We don't know, but we need a system that accepts all of those, those things. The next thing for us, particularly as a company, is around uh, the speed of the deployment. So we pride ourselves on how quickly we can um, produce and roll out fixturing. Uh, so we need a system that's very fast to allow that to happen. Scalability is something that we also are quite interested in, um, in that we have uh, more and more customers want uh, very dense data meshes from the products that they're making. So they want to understand the kind of minutiae detail of what's happening in things as they're manufacturing. So we need something that can accept very large numbers of sensors, as well as being very useful for just having a single sensor on its own. So we need this scalability. And the final part really is the integration of these systems. So quite often a digital system is required to be part of a wider network. So a, a customer may have um, for example, a, a SAP system or some sort of ERP system that has to take data in from these sensors. And it's about having, allowing whatever platform we choose to be able to integrate with those, those readily. So uh, an example of where we've used a, a traditional automotion, automation approach uh, can, be seen, can be seen here. So this is a, a large structure. Um, it's around four meters in diameter. Um, and it was for effectively rounding um, and also holding a, a large composite com component during machining. And also there was some bonding applications that went on with this as well. Now, as a company, we approached this in a fairly traditional way in that we looked at using PLCs and uh, large motors. So in this play case, they're uh, AC servo motors uh, with an inverter. Um, and we, we, we addressed it in a very, very you know, traditional, traditional way of, of doing these sorts of systems. Now, for us, as a company, this, this worked fine. The customer were happy and that, 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 that's all good. But it doesn't necessarily work fit the way that we like to work. Um, we're quite iterative as a company. We, we like to go into a customer and understand what their actual requirements are and then work through solutions and then you know, kind of produce um, iterations of a design to make sure we get to that optimal re result that the customer's after. A large PLC system like this is expensive um, and it's quite slow to implement and you need relatively um, experienced controls and electronics um, engineers to, to implement these sorts of systems, which doesn't necessarily suit the way that we work. So what we started to do uh, a few years ago was create our own system that suited what, what we needed. And that's what we're going to look at now. So this system we refer to as MetElements. And what we've effectively done is we've taken the modern idea of Internet of Things, and we've applied it to an industrial platform for sensing, um, but also control and automation can be driven through this system. The system works around what we call elements. These are small compute units that are on a, um, a almost infinitely scalable network. So you basically keep plugging them in, a bit like an office network, where you could keep, keep adding sensors and this, the system will grow. And because we've got computation at each of these nodes where we're, we're able to have virtually any type of sensor we like in our system. So it gives us that flexibility that we really crave in terms of we can have the, the, the high end industrial high accuracy sensors in, in, in a Met Elements network. But we can also look at using lower end sensors that you might find in a smartphone, for example. 
Um, now these these low end sensors, because of smartphones, and they they have to be almost equally as robust as industrial systems. But generally, they're becoming lower price and much smarter, offering much more features than the traditional industrial sensing. And finally. Because we use these Internet of Things standards, it gives us this ultimate flexibility of, of what we can do with these sensors and how we, how we integrate them into our structure. So they work very well with the, the way that we work as a company. They're, they're very easy to plug in and plug out, so we can go through that iterative process of choosing the right sensor for the right job. So here we've got a bit of an overview of how these systems differ. So on the left, we have a traditional PLC. So here we've got a single monolithic block computer, effectively, to which you would attach your, your varying sensors. So these would be 10 volt industrial sensors, um, things like in, you know, inductive proximity sensors and capacitive sensors, those sorts of things, which you would also have into that going your, 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 your but control buttons and that kind of thing. And then off, off to that, you then also have normally some kind of HMI, you know, some sort of SCADA system, something like that, talks to your PLC. Now, the, the, the problem with this approach really is the fact that that single PLC, you have to sort of understand or over-spec it in order to have a, a system that's, that's scalable for your future needs. And this can become a bit of a problem, especially when you're looking at being quite flexible and quite agile in the way that you're putting your tooling together. So what we came up with is the, the, the process that was on the, on the um, right. And this is a, a system that uses a, a, a distributed computing approach, so kind of, um, as I say, Internet of Things style, style approach. And here we have a, a computational element attached to each type of sensor. Now, the beauty of this is that when the, 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 the element actually does all of the, the language conversion between the sensor and the rest of the system. So it means that whatever sensor we put onto the element, when it leaves, when the data leaves the element, they're all talking the same language. This gives us incredible flexibility around how that we can use all these different types of sensors. But working in this in this way, we can also then start to create these, these systems that are um, also use these kind of modern dashboarding approaches um, that have become quite quite um, quite important to understanding and interpreting data and even machine learning approaches. And here we've got a schematic of a typical sort of meta elements layout and what it would look like. Um, so on on the right of the screen, um, we've got the the um, where the, the the elements. So we'd have the blue boxes that are effectively the different types of sensors. These would then be connected to your elements. Now each element holds a, um, a a polynomial calibration profile for the sensor that's attached to it. So before we plug the the element into the system, the 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 element already knows the capability of the sensor that's attached to it. This is what gives us our plug and play ability. All of the elements then plug into the power control and management system that we affectionately refer to as the SPO. Uh, and this handles all of the data and it also handles all of the power to the element. So we've got single cable connectivity between the, the network controller and the, and the element. We don't have to run a separate power, power line. Outside of this, we then go into standard network switches, so PoE network switches that could go in. That could just be off-the-shelf, um, office-style ones or industrial ones, depending on the on the requirements. And then these would then connect into our server software um, and into the database. Uh, and this is where you could then do your machine learning and your um, your advanced analytics and understand things like SPC data of the the, the measurements you are taking. Here we've got what the actual hardware looks like. So on the bottom there, we've got the element. So the element is a relatively small component. Um, it's around 40 millimeters long and 20 millimeters wide. This gives us flexibility as to where we put it in the structure, um, which works very well with our laser cut structures. So it means we can sort of hide them inside the structure. This means that we can have, you know, we can build them into structures very quickly without having to worry about having a, a housing or a separate separate um, box for um, a panel for um, collecting the data. And onto this, these we can connect four different types, four sensors at once generally, um, and we can have all sorts of different inputs. So we can have analog inputs, digital inputs. We can do things like I square C and SPI, which are um, normally connections that you use between microchips. So we can 
be very be very specific with the way we communicate with with sensors. These then connect into what we call the SPO, and here we can see the custom design SPO that we've created. This is an industrial grade um, power over Ethernet system that um, effectively works by creating a, a, a current that we can use, that we can supply to the elements. So it does a lot of smoothing of the AC voltage that comes in by the PoE normally. Um, and then this also handles all of the data. So it, it handles all the data that's then passed through to, through to the server. So it's these two parts of the core of our system that gives us that flexibility. And next slide, please. So before I finish, here's a couple of examples of where we've uh, used these systems in, in the wild, in anger. Uh, so the first we've got is a, a measurement system that we used for um, injection molded, um, sorry, blow molded fuel tanks. Uh, this system we had around 54 sensors on, on it um, and we were using those sensors to perform not only simple sort of distance measurements, but also we were building them into um, clusters of sensors so we could do things such as circularity measurements or concentricity measurements and those, those, those kinds of geometric measurements are normally quite quite tricky to do. Um, more recently we started looking at kind of ruggedizing the system. So here we started looking at these um, using these systems for machining processes. So this central image is actually a uh, used in a, uh, um, a milling process for light weighting of um, aerospace components. It's quite a it's quite a an aggressive um, cutting process. So we've got these big zero point um, fixturing units that are holding down a large chunk of aluminium as it's being machined. And these sensors are, are flooded with coolant. So what we've had to do here is create a, an extra robust version of, of the MET elements. Uh, and they allow the, they basically allow the customer to see distortions in real time as the, as the machining operation is happening. The final example that I'm going to show you is the smart benches. So this is uh, probably the, the, one of the, the newer versions that we use for, for the MetElements. Here we use the, the MetElements to give a smart assembly bench. This, this, this works by giving a, 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 an operator instructions on how to create an assembly. Um, and then it verifies to make sure that assembly has been created. So it means that very complicated assemblies can be created um, using people who don't necessarily understand the, the assembly fully that they're, that they're making. It means that you can have uh, a system where every part, every assembly that comes down the production line could effectively be different, but because the operator is being guided through the assembly process, it doesn't really matter on their productivity. So this is, this is a, a, a relatively new feature, a new system for us. Um, and it uses the bi-directionality of the MET element. So in this particular example, we have to read information from the sensors, but also send information back to the sensors. So here we've got quite an interesting use of the system at, at its best. Um, so I think I'm going to hand over to Andrew now, who's going to take you through our latest product. We move on to the next slide. Okay, Metlaser has uh, built a reputation on creating innovative uh, solutions to um, difficult to solve problems. And that's been great, but each one is different, each one is bespoke, and that results in a very complex business. So the uh, the image you can see before you just a snapshot of some of the fixtures that uh, that we've done over the years and um, and that is only a small portion so all the other hundreds of, of uh, solutions are all different so when I was generating this even I was surprised just just the variety and diversity of the, of the types of solutions that we've we've done so what we've we've had a desire for some time to standardize on some elements of, of our uh, our fixturing and solutions uh, could you move on to the next slide so one one area that we've we've done a lot of work in is metrology type fixtures for supporting parts while they're measured on CMMs. Um, so 
gained a lot of experience about creating uh, a support structure that gives good repeatability so that the part always goes back into almost exactly the same place each time. The top left hand um, uh, fixture is a case where it was a very flexible part and we needed to clamp it quite rigidly but to, using the metalase approach we were able to uh, set the geometry of the clamps exactly in the right place so that it didn't deliver any twist to the part so if you've got a, a flexible part we can clamp it quite firmly but without in, inducing any twist or distortion to the part below that is a um, a restraining fixture for a measurement of a casing the restraining fixture rounded the one meter casing to around 50 microns so uh, quite quite precise um, uh, we also built the, the the support structure for that underneath as well so the center one just a fixture that gives lots of access prior to that fixture they'd been doing it in two operations uh, one one way around and then turning it over to do the other side so so that's uh, if you could move on to the next slide so we took that all that experience and and as um, Stuart described the met elements and we've developed the uh, the smart gauge um, this is a the aim is to be an almost off the shelf uh, digital gauge that will return very very fast uh, results to like no go go no go go, go output uh, but also st uh, give the, uh, the da data available for real real time analysis or analysis later after it's been stored you can analyze it later um, uh, so that you can look at trends and, and and so on so if you want to move on next slide so so Stuart described the the fuel tank application that we've done before, and we've done several for sort of composite uh, component manufacturers. But all of those have been bespoke fixtures, totally different design from the the ground upwards. So every bit sort of bespoke to that that application. So our aim was to create some standardisation to this gauge. So we went through a series of sprints where. Uh, we validated in sprint one validated different ways of of creating a base structure um, different ways of creating the, the top surface of the of the of the base in order to mount the the towers and and uh, the sensors um so we used um, aluminium extrusions we used metalase the metalase approach uh, um, aluminium fabrications and so on took all that learning and applied that to sprint two, which was a gauge to measure a composite fan blade. Uh, we learned so much doing that, that we then carried that information and re revamped that same gauge as sprint three, uh, with lots of improvements to the robustness of the gauges, uh, the stability of the gauges, um, um, improved base and so on. And then more recently, we've then taken that learning and applied it to a demonstrator, which is at the NCC and we'll discuss and look at later. We we'll go to the next slide. So features of the of the uh, smart gauge. We've now got a standardized base. We've got that in sort of three sizes. So off the shelf, virtually we can we can supply three sizes, 600 by 600. Or, 600 by 1200 and then 1500 by 750 these are sizes we think are going to cover most applications but I'm, I'm sure there'll be some come along and require us to to tweak that but that won't be a problem because it's it's sort of easily easily um, modified to a, to a different size we've got standardized electronics which uh, are mounted in a standard housing and that's expandable so if you want more met elements more sensors we can we can cater for that and uh, the increased number of the SPO units so um, all very standardized the top top plate off which we mount the bespoke elements the towers um, we build that onto a structure below and mounted it um, 
about seven or eight points, eight points around this, the, the the perimeter, which allows us to jack that plate until it's level. So this is a, you can see the process there where we're leveling up that plate to ensure it's as flat as we can get it. Um, move on to the next slide. Um, so in the top left hand corner there, we, you can see the, the standard towers that support the structure. So these are the support towers. Um, these are parametric, so now we've designed those to be spent a lot of time doing tests to get them as rigid as we could for as simple a design as we could. Um, but we can now bring those into a CAD model, uh, change the parameters, so height, width, um, position, angles, um, very easily. We've even got planes in in the model which we can align to a plane on the surface of a part, and the 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 tower will adapt itself then and pick up the mounting points in the in the base plate so automatically. So it it, it is bespoke, but it's almost just off the shelf really. Uh, similarly, the the sensor towers, which are in the lower picture on the left, uh, these are parametrically driven, so we can arrange those to any angle position um, and effectively then uh, manufacture those very rapidly. Uh, on the bottom right is the smart button, and this is, uh, this is a button that uh, the operator will use to indicate start of the process. So the center is a push button, um, but this is connected to a met element, and will the outer outer display uh, will return the the uh, red or green for the go no go uh, result, but also will tell you what stage you are in the process or give you alerts or warnings uh, by displaying different colors which will rotate at different speeds or flash on and off and so on so so that's quite a, uh, as we call it a smart button that can uh, can uh, communicate what state the process is in one move on the next one so this is the uh, project that we've just done at the ncc and this was to create a trimming fixture but combined with um, uh, uh, an inspection fixture, so in process inspection of the trimmed part. So the yellow, orange, gold part is the part, and that is cut with an ultrasonic knife out of the um, uh, preformed uh, composite material. Um, and then we, the concept is to lower the the part down below the surface of the top of the fixture and do the sensing underneath and return it back up. Um, the benefit of doing that in processes is that you are measuring it while it's still fixed to the vacuum uh, chuck, you could call it, that uh, that supported it while it was cut. If you took it off and put it on a different fixture, then the part will have moved, and the meaning, the, the readings that you get from the measurements will be virtually meaningless because it, it can have moved so much. So, by measuring it actually on the part, you 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 can tell exactly what happened when you did the cut. <clears throat> we do have a short video, which is. Um, bit crude, but it will give you an idea of, of, the, of, of what goes on. So it did have some wonderful music, but they've taken it off. So it's uh, so that's the that's the vacuum support lowering down. The cork area around is where the ultrasonic knife runs. This is it returning back up. So and here you can see the smart button indicating that it's lowering lowers down and then now it's changed color to indicate that it's testing there uh, the probes coming in to do the test retracting and then it's rising back up again you can see the cork at the edge there when it rises up it's indicating a fail but that was because there was no part present so um, so that i think that that gives you an indication of 
of how it's this this smart gauge is not just a gauge that um, just gauges the apartment does a, gives us simple measurement. It's the, it's the ability to be able to combine that and tailor that to the requirements of the of the customer. That's important. Um, we've had inquiries to look at processes where we we uh, measure a part and then we clamp it in a certain position that they've determined through artificial intelligence that when they carry out the next process, it will mean that it, it flexes back to the correct, uh, the nominal geometry. Uh, so it's that sort of application where we see this smart gauging um, being utilized. Um, as far as specifications concerned, uh, we, um, the sensor linearity is, uh, is about uh, to about seven microns. Without the met element doing its linearization, we're looking at about 84 microns. So you can see how important the, the met element is to getting the accuracy out of the sensor. Uh, the resolution to about 12 microns, and that's mainly due to the analog to digital converter that we're using at the moment. Um, the error we've done a sort of a buildup of uncertainties and it was better than 0.1 of a millimeter. And we haven't done a full gauge R and R on it, but uh, we've some done some repeatability, although with different operators loading and unloading the the component, and so repeatability is uh, sort of around 50 microns, better than 50 microns. <clears throat> Shall we move on to the next slide? So, just in in summary, really, the the um, the smart gauge uh, gives you a very quick, very rapid uh, measuring um, measurement, um, returning a go no go output, but at the same time, just being switched into the dark, returning, generating the data to uh, to allow. Uh, SPC sort of analysis, um, real time or stored. Uh, we can generate alarms. So if you're if you're working between upper and lower limits, if you start to approach one or the other, uh, it can send out an alarm. Um, and uh, it's it's very very simple to operate. No, you don't need to be a skilled operator to to uh, to use the the unit. Um, so. Um, that, in a nutshell, is the smart gauge. I'd like to hand you over live to Jonathan Andrews and Jonathan Burtu down at the NCC. Um, do we have Jonathan? Just waiting for Jonathan to turn his camera on. His uh, microphone is being turned on, so we can hear you, Jonathan, down at the NCC. Hi, there. yeah. Thank, thank you very much for that, uh, Andrew. Uh, I think we're having a few technical difficulties with the uh, with the camera, um, which seems to have uh, uh, sort of switched itself off. But I think is it back on? We're working now. Can everyone see the, uh, the, the the camera? So yeah. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm here today um, in the actual uh, Smart Factory Innovation Hub. Um, down at the NCC in Bristol, uh, and as you can hopefully see on the on the camera now, that uh, this is the fixture that you might recognise from the video that Andrew just uh, showed a few minutes ago. Um, I'm joined uh, today by Jonathan Butt, who um, is the Deputy Chief Engineer uh, for the uh, the Digital Engineering Business Unit. Um, so good afternoon, Jonathan. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for joining us today. Thanks, for that. Um Could you just give us a quick uh, sort of overview of what the uh, the NCC is and, and how the Innovation Hub is actually working. Yep. So the uh, National Composite Centre is part of the High Value Manufacturing uh, Catapult, um, one of the seven centres that form that catapult. Um, we we focus on uh, composite component production and working with companies that are interested in composite components. Um, the areas of composites that we're interested in is uh, the development of composite processes and uh, novel components, um, and also the development of the sustainability and also the digital infrastructure that can sit around manufacturing, um, not just in composites, but in general as well. So uh, that's the main drivers of the NCC. 
the Smart Factory Innovation Hub project was um, a pilot program that was run across all of the catapults, um, all of the high value manufacturing catapults. Um, it started in November, and the main purpose of the, the project was to create uh, test hubs, uh, test beds that um, allow for technology providers to engage. Uh, with with the catapults and essentially put their technology into industrial environments so that manufacturers could start to gain some understanding and um, start to work out how these technologies might be a potential benefit to them. So it's a it's a physical location or multiple physical locations that are targeted at uh, facilitating technology development, innovation and deployment in industrial settings so that manufacturers have have a place to come and look at technology deployment and understand its relevance to them. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, so, in, in terms of the uh, the Metlays uh, smart gauge, um, what was the reason for, for sort of choosing that, that that technology to be part of the R and D setup here? So, we wanted a fully instrumented uh, preforming setup in the NCC in the NCC smart factory hub. So. Um, as part of that, we, we already have an instrumented preforming setup, but the trimming process predominantly is, is not instrumented in industry. Um, so there might be some metrology that happens offline afterwards. Um, the Metlase, um smart gauge uh, system offered us the opportunity to embed sensing into the tooling so that we could do in process in line in inspection of the, of the uh, process. Um, so it's novel to industry in terms of it not really being deployed at the moment. Um, and it, the, the smart gauge picks up on the specific area of the preform that has just been trimmed, which is important for the, um, for the infusion process, because if you trim it too small, you won't be able to infuse your, your products properly. And if you, you, made, you trim it too large, then you won't be able to close your tool to do the infusion at all. So, uh, it's a it's a pretty critical step, but it's, at the moment is is done offline with metrology. Um, okay, um, so I mean, in, in terms of um, the uh, sort of setup and, and, and everything, um, what sort of common challenges uh, do you kind of face from your your members in, in well, with regards to smart and digital uh, technologies? So our challenges are very similar to the challenges that Richard spoke about at the beginning of the presentation. Um, we find in the digital business unit that the the main thing that we we are dealing with is providing adequate value proposition of digital technologies to to the manufacturing landscape in the UK. So um, there's a lot of talk about innovation and different technologies that can be deployed. How do businesses go about identifying which technologies are right for them? And then how do they make sure that those technologies are actually appropriate and that they're going to deliver those benefits? So very, very similar to what Richard was saying about unraveling and um, uh, the, um, I can't remember the term Richard used, but it, making sure that technologies are relevant or appropriate. Uh, that's absolutely, you know, where we're working and that where we're seeing the challenges as well. So it rings true to what, what you guys are seeing as well. Okay. Um, so, I mean, based on, on, on those challenges, um, how has the, the smart gauge itself um, allowed the NCC to overcome those kinds of, of challenges in terms of value or benefits? So the smart gauge itself is um, the fact that it's in the NCC and part of the innovation hub, it gives us a platform to demonstrate to the to the outside world what technologies are available. So, you know, coming into the uh, Smart Factory Innovation Hub and having this piece of tool in here with that embedded sensing, that, that, that gives us a, a showpiece that people can walk around and start to understand, okay, I do these processes, this technology is absolutely relevant. So we can start to do that demystification of technology deployment and start that analysis of whether things are appropriate. Um, and then, you know, the, the other big thing is, you know, once you've identified that technology can be deployed and will be a benefit to you, then you need to identify people who can actually action it and turn it into something. So MetLay is coming forward and putting a tool in the innovation hub gives us um, gives gives us the opportunity to say, look, the MetLays have a track record for deploying technology and embedding it into the 
uh, into industrial environments, into tooling. So you can, you know, it, that, that helps us as well because we've got someone to point to who can actually action the, the output of our, our research essentially. So that, that's, that helps solve the challenges as well. Okay. And um, um, I mean, in, in terms of um, the NCC itself, uh, how do businesses sort of tap into um, your R&D expertise? So there, there's a variety of ways. Um, the Innovation Hub project is is coming to a close at the moment, um, but potentially it might be taken forward. There's a there's a large national program that's uh, potentially going to start in the future. Um, there's uh, the, there's a variety of ways of getting involved with the NCC. they be on the the Smart Factor Innovation Hub. So we've got the Digital Business Unit. Uh, if you're interested in digital transformation, um, digital diagnostics understanding where technology might be appropriate. We have got a variety of tools and services that we're developing and uh, and testing within the NCC and beyond. And you're more than welcome to, to knock on our door uh, via the website and come and have a look at what we can offer you in terms of our services. Um, then there's the composite side of the, the NCC. And again, that's contact through the website to get involved with any of the work that's happening there. Um, and then there's a specific element of the NCC, which is focused on SME engagement. So this banner is the NCC Connect team, and they're looking at uh, engaging SMEs across the UK. Uh, so composite related stuff and other, other technology deployment sort of challenges as well. So, um, you know, there's a whole host of ways that you can get involved with the work we're doing and uh, come and visit and have a look around by all means. So lots of different ways of coming and getting engaged. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, I uh, really appreciate your uh, your time today. No, um, you. So, uh, yeah, um, we'll, uh, we'll now hand back to, uh, to Dave, uh, I believe is now uh, going to take back control. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys, down there at the um, NCC. Um, that, again, has, as per usual, uh, with everyone on uh, our webinars, proved to be um, really interesting. And I've learned a lot more about what we do at MetLays and how we work with the industry. Um, I've got a question for um, Stuart. Um, Stuart, if you've got an existing manufacturing process, we've seen lots of kit today which has um, sensors all built in. What, what if we could mount our sensors to existing manufacturing processes? Can we do that? Um, yes, certainly, very, very much so. So the, the system is designed to be open. Um, obviously, it, it works very well with, with the, the, the fixtures that we design and the tools. Um, but we've designed it to be kind of almost platform agnostic, both digitally and mechanically. Um, so we have had instances where we've applied the system to uh, machine tool beds, uh, where the, the customer's already got an existing machine tool set up and they wanted to add some sensors into it. So we used, used it in that particular example. Um, but we can also add it into existing tooling as well, sort of existing fixturing if it's if it's there. Um, and yes, so we, we can add it into other, other systems because they're already on site. And can we integrate the technology into business systems, enterprise resource systems such as SAP? Uh, yes, very much so. So we try and keep it as open-ended and flexible as we can because you know we're a consultancy and we need to think think in this way. Um, so the system um, uses kind of open web standards like MQCT um, and, and web sockets to allow communication with other systems. Um, it can also have more more kind of uh, environment specific systems, for example, uh, Siemens who use OPC uh, UA, we can communicate with those sort of systems as well. So we, we can we can work either way basically. We try to try to bring everybody into the family. Excellent, the proper digital approach with APIs into everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and, and Andrew, um, thinking about the calibration and accuracy of the sensors, how, how do you manage that or monitor it? How do you know that the sensors are measured things correctly? on the front of the tower and this allows us to use slip gauges to calibrate the, the sensor so we can calibrate the sensor and that's where we get the good linearity and also um, uh, and ensure that uh, the sensors read in the correct value. Um, we then have to cal calibrate the, the whole fixture back to some reference. So 
Uh, and that depends on, so to, to some extent, will depend on what the customer wants as to what, as to how far we go uh, in that calibration process and traceability and so on. But, um, that answers the question. Yep, lovely. Thank you very much. And, and Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Andrews, over at the NCC, we saw the smart bench there. Is that available now for um, for our customers to get the whole hands on, or does it have some way to go yet? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in terms of technology, um, we are here to to, to sort of um, help uh, scope uh those those projects um it's it's readily available uh to, to start talking to us uh right now so uh, yeah if, if there's anything um of interest from from the webinar and you want to try and talk then, then yeah please uh, please contact us lovely richard can i pass over to you now then sure sure thing thanks thanks hey thanks everybody i and thanks to our audience i hope you found that to be informative and interesting and, and insightful the, the last the last message from us is really the one on the screen challenges um, we, we've spoken a lot about our technology platform our standardization but also as Andrew said we still have this you know strong heritage in solving multiple different engineering problems so if you've if you've seen anything today that uh, you think could be relevant to your business or if you think we could develop something relative to your business then you know do what it says on the tin and challenge it get in touch the sales at metlays.com email comes to myself and Jonathan and a few of the others in the team so we can uh, get the engagement going very very swiftly so yeah please, please do challenges right thanks for that we've got the next webinar coming up um on the 22nd of july um you can uh, go to the metlays website or scan that qr code there um uh, this webinar has been recorded so it will be sent out and it's there so to all of our uh, participants and registrants um, but thank you very much everyone thank you for the presenters and thank you for everyone who has attended that's the end of the webinar thank you very much thank you goodbye